Father, in Jesus' name, bring your word to life for these people. Let them be supremely encouraged as they come to understand your promises and your word to your people. Lord, this is not my word, this is your word. And I pray that I will transmit it to your people exactly as you meant them to receive it. In Jesus' name, <coughs> amen and amen. Take your Bibles and turn with me, if you will, to Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. Isaiah 6, 1. And it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, there's a tremendous backstory on that we won't go into right now, but it's worth studying if you have the time. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on the throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphs, or seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two wings they covered their feet, and with two wings they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, the whole earth is full of his glory. The sound of their voices the doorposts and thresholds shook and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I'm ruined, for I'm a man of unclean lips and I live among people of unclean lips. My eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand and he, that he'd taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, see, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. And then I heard a voice of the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. And he said, Go tell this people, be ever hearing but never understanding. Be ever seeing but never perceiving. Make the heart of this people callous. Make their ears dull and close uh, their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn and be healed. That's a really powerful passage. You can't read it without saying amen in your heart. It's a powerful passage. It's the story of one man being let into heaven for a very brief time and actually coming face to face with the Lord. He sees the angels flying in his presence. He hears as they cry out, holy, holy, holy. There's a magnificence to this passage. The train of his robe is so beautiful, so spectacular, that it actually fills the entire temple. But then the second half of this passage, things turn. In the second half of this passage, Isaiah is given an impossible task. He's told, go and preach to these people who will not listen. Because if they listened, why things would change for them. But Isaiah, I want you to go out and I want you to begin to preach even though they will not listen. Their ears will not hear, their eyes will not see, and their hearts will not respond. And as I began to think through this, I, I began to think to myself, the only thing that could make Isaiah do a job like this was a remarkable revelation of God and all his majesty. 
the power of heaven itself. Amen. This awesome vision that he sees, this awesome presence of, uh, of God and the angels around him is so shocking that he says to himself, I'm a man of unclean lips. I'm a man of, uh, of earthly passions, if you will. And I, and I live amongst people that have the same problems. And now I'm standing here in front of the king. I'm going to die. And finally an angel comes with a hot coal and touches his lips and says, See, your sin is atoned for. It's paid for. And he's able to go on and do the job that God has set before him. And so my question to you is this. What would it change in your prayer life? If you knew your prayer was going right here to where Isaiah is at that moment. If you knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that God was listening. If you knew without any question that he could not only hear, but he could and would respond. You see, it made a tremendous change in Isaiah. Isaiah came away ready to face the impossible. Ready to face a situation which was totally in the natural impossible. By the way, Isaiah would end up sawn in two with a wooden saw. How would you face an end like that? You see, what this man was being shown was such a great vision that he could go through what was in front of him. And he could do it with nothing doubting. He could do it with absolute assurity. Well, sometimes we don't have absolute assurity. A surety. There's one Isaiah, one book of Isaiah, and there are probably three men in the Bible that have seen this kind of thing, Isaiah, Ezekiel, and John. But all the rest did not get this kind of vision. This was a remarkable transportation to heaven. Each one was facing dire circumstances. Take your Bibles and turn to Matthew chapter 16, verse 5. Matthew 16, 5. When they went across the lake, the disciples forgot to take bread. Be careful, Jesus said, be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they discussed this among themselves and said, it's because we didn't bring any bread. The Lord was making a statement to them. Be careful of the yeast of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Yeast in the Bible is a picture of sin. He's saying, watch out for the sin of these people, which will lead you astray. But they're saying to themselves, oh, he's saying this because he knows we forgot to bring bread and he's just trying to rub it in. Aware of their discussion, Jesus asked, you of little faith. Why are you talking among yourselves about having no bread? Do you still not understand? Don't you remember the five loaves for the 5,000? And how many basketfuls did you gather? Or the seven loaves for the 4,000? And how many basketfuls did you gather? How is it you don't understand that I was not talking about bread? You see, in spite of the fact that they walked with him, in spite of the fact that they talked with him, they didn't really get it. And he's making it very clear to them. They're, they're, uh, they're, they're saying, well, he's, he's making a nasty comment to us because we forgot to bring the bread. 
And he's turning back and saying, how silly. I could bring bread out of the stones if I chose to. I could bring bread from anywhere. I could have it rain down from heaven if I chose to. Why are you not seeing the point? You see, in spite of the fact that they were there with him through the miracles that he did, they didn't always get it. And finally it says, then they understood that he was not telling them to be on guard against yeast used in bread, but against the teachings of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Oh, you of little faith. You're not seeing the bigger picture, the spiritual understanding, the spiritual meaning. You're seeing the literal situation. These men had not had that transportation to heaven to see the king in all his glory. But they had walked with the king on earth. But he had to challenge them. You have little faith. You think I'm so small minded that I would pick on you for not bringing bread? Don't you remember the miracles that I've done? Don't you remember what I'm capable of? Amen. Why would you focus in on this? Because I mentioned yeast. And then finally the penny drops and it clicks for them and they get it. They come to the understanding that he is in fact talking about the sin of the Pharisees and the sin of the Sadducees and the fact that it grows and infects those around them. Turn to Mark for a moment, chapter 9, verse 17. Mark chapter 9, verse 17. Isaiah saw something fantastic that changed his life. The disciples walked with Christ and eventually they would come to the understanding and every one of them would be put to death <coughs> in terrible ways for the cause. Only one of them that we think might have died a natural death. Because eventually they would come to understand that this is the Messiah. This is the one who will die. This is the one who will come back. This is the one that is worth going to the edge for. In Mark 9, 17, you have this little story. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I bought, my, I bought to you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground and he foams at the mouth and gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. Oh, unbelieving generation, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they bought him. And when the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. And he fell to the ground and rolled around foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It's thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us. If you can, if you can, Jesus said, everything is possible for him who believes. <laughs> Notice what this man says. He says, Lord, I bought him to you. I've taken him to every other rabbi. He's been to every medical professional. But Lord, if there's anything you can do, and Jesus stops him. He said, what do you mean, if I can? If I can. Everything is possible to him who believes. Immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help thou mine unbelief. I don't think there's a Christian alive that has not at some time found themselves in this position. 
Isaiah saw something that gave him a certainty in his heart. The disciples who walked with Christ at times were certain, at times were not certain. And so we mustn't be too hard on this man who had only just met the Lord. And he said to himself, or he said to the Lord, Lord, if you can. The Lord said, what do you mean if I can? Of course I can. Everything's possible to him that believes. And immediately the boy's father said, Lord, I do believe. Help thou mine unbelief. I have to believe. In fact, I believe that every Christian at some point says to himself, Lord, I want to believe. I want to believe with all my heart. I want to believe. But I'm going to need you to get me past the doubt. I'm going to need you to shake that doubt in me. I'm going to need you to reveal something to me of yourself. I'm going to need you to show me how magnificent you are. I'm going to need you to give me a, something to go on. Help thou mine unbelief. You know, Jesus didn't chide the man for this. He chided the man when the man said, Lord, if you can. But he did not chide the man that said, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief, because it was honest. It was truthful. It was a man saying, I'm in a situation here. And I do believe that you're possibly able to do this, but I'm not sure. But Lord, I want to believe. Help me. And when Jesus saw the crowd was running to the sea and he rebuked the evil spirit, you deaf mute spirit, he said, I command you come out of him and never enter him again. Jesus saw that there was a crowd coming to watch the demon. And so he would not let the demon steal the show. And so the Lord just turns to that demonic spirit and commands him to come out instantaneously. I'll tell you, that man walked away with his son, assured of what God is able to do. Amen. Assured of what God is able to do. No longer was he concerned about his unbelief. I will guarantee and I will bet you that man went away and he began to tell people what God had done. He began to tell people what Jesus had done. He began to tell people he was really the Messiah, that he had found him. I will bet that that man became an evangelist like nobody else in town. Because God had dealt with his unbelief by giving him a miracle he couldn't even imagine or believe for. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, it says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Amen. Seek, and you'll find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, of his son, asks for bread, would give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, would give him a snake? If you then, though you're evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more your heavenly Father give good gifts to those that ask Him? Ask, ask, and it will be given to you. Lord, I believe, but help thou mine unbelief. Amen. Seek, and you'll find. Knock, and the door will be opened. For everyone that asks, receives. Amen. Amen. Stop expecting God to say no. Stop expecting God to fail. Stop expecting God to step back and cower in the shadows. And start expecting God to come to the forefront. Amen. Expect Him to show up. Hallelujah. Expect Him to do exactly as His Word said He would do. Hallelujah. If He being good gives good gifts who are we to believe that he would leave us out Amen. in Matthew chapter 14 verse 25 and you can turn there with me
Matthew 14, 25. It says during the fourth watch, that's by the way, 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. Of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. And when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. You would be too, so would I. If you were out on the water there and you saw a man walking towards you, I promise you, you'd learn to paddle. And they said, it's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. And then Peter got down out of the boat and walked on the water and came towards Jesus. And while, upon me, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid. Beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. He said, you of little faith. Why did you doubt? You see, a great miracle was transpiring. Amen. Peter got out, got onto the water. And began to walk on the water. The only other man in history to do so. What a remarkable scenario. As he walks on the water. And there as he's walking on the water. Things are going great. Until he gets his eyes off of Jesus. And he starts to notice the wind. And he starts saying to himself. My goodness. This is bad weather. And the waves. My goodness. Look at the waves. Why I'm being sprayed with water from those waves. And. And each wave seems to be getting bigger than the last one. And suddenly he's going down because he's got his eyes off of Jesus and onto the wind and the waves. I tell you, keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of your faith. Don't let the winds and the waves pull you aside. You may still be at the place of Lord, I believe, but help them on unbelief. You may not have had a certain revelation like Isaiah. But you have the word of God. Amen. And based on that, you stand strong. Amen. You stand strong. You. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. I believe poor old Peter had gone down once, gone down twice, and was headed down for the third time. And Jesus reached out his hand, catches him, and pulls him back up on top of the waves. And then he said, you have little faith. Think about that scenario. All the others are still in the boat. The only man with enough oomph to say, Lord, if you can do it, can I do it too? And get out of the boat, even though he starts to sink, was Peter. All the rest are hunkered down there in the boat. But Peter, Peter is the man that says, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. And so he begins to get up and walk on the water. But because he got his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sink. And the Lord says to him, oh, you little faith. Why did you doubt? Doubt kills. Doubt is the killer. Faith brings life. Amen. And doubt will kill. And it says they climbed into the boat and the wind died down. I think the Lord pulled him up onto the waves. Put an arm around him. Come on, Pete, let's walk. Let's get to the boat. Walks him over to the boat. And the two of them get into the boat together. In the book of John, 
the Lord Jesus begins to make this comment in chapter 16. He said, a woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that the child is born into the world. So it is with you. Now is your time for grief. But I will see you again and you will rejoice and no one will take away your joy. He's talking about the fact that he's going to go to the cross and die. And he said, listen, it's, it's a... It's a time that you're going to weep and you're going to mourn because you're going, to, you're going to see me die. But I'm telling you, you're going to see me again. I'm coming back. I'm going to raise from the dead. This is not going to be permanent. In that day, you'll no longer ask me anything. I tell you the truth. My Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. In that day. What day is that? Is that the millennium? Is that when we all die and go to heaven? Well, he tells us. He said, now is your time for grief, but I will see you again and you will rejoice and no one will take away your joy. When did that happen? It happened after the resurrection. It happened when Jesus appeared to them. It happened when they were gathered together in the upper room. It happened on repeated occasions. And he said, in that day, in that day, in the day when you see me again, you'll no longer ask me for anything. I tell you the truth, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you've not asked anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. Though I have been speaking to you figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly about my Father. In that day, you will ask in my name. I'm not saying that I'll ask the Father on your behalf. No. The Father himself loves you. Amen. Amen. God the Father loves you. Amen. Jesus said, I'm not going to ferry a message to my dad. You're going to go directly to him in my name. You're going to ask in my name. You're going to stand in faith. You're going to believe. You're going to trust God is able. You're going to rely on God. You're going to depend upon him. If you don't have any circumstances in your life where you need to hear this now, you will one day. So now's the time to learn it. Don't let doubt sink your faith. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Him. Pray to the Father in Jesus' name. It was only ever one man that Jesus, that the Father said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. When you come to the Father in Jesus' name, you're essentially saying, Father, I'm standing here in the name of the Son in whom you are very pleased. You are delighted in Him. And He's given me permission to use His name before you. And so I come before you and I ask. And I'm not going to let doubt rob me of my miracle. I'm not going to let doubt change my circumstances. I'm going to stand in faith. It would be wonderful if every living Christian could be transported to heaven for just two seconds. But that's not the plan of God. The plan of God is that we should walk by faith, not by certainty. And so we walk by faith, nothing doubting, trusting God, believing Him for His hand of deliverance. And God will make a way. God will deliver. God will bring about miracles. Amen. You will see what you have never seen before. Things will be changed. 
circumstances will be turned around. And you'll go on your way rejoicing. And the Bible says that your joy might be full. Amen. You will have full joy as you realize what God is doing and what he's capable of. The Father himself loves you because you've loved me and have believed that I came from God. There isn't a one of us that aren't believing for something. There isn't a one of us that don't have requests and things we need from God. Maybe it's time to doubt the doubts. Maybe it's time to stand in faith. And believe God that he's going to come through. Let not the wind and the waves cause you to sink. Will you bow your heads with me? Precious, precious Heavenly Father in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that you are in charge of all things. That you are in charge of all scenarios and circumstances. And Father God, we trust you. We believe in you. We depend upon you. You are a miracle working God. And we have situations in front of us that require nothing less than complete miracles. And so we invite you, Father. We invite you, Father, in the name of Jesus to begin to act majestically, sweepingly, to turn circumstances and scenarios around, to bring victory where there is no victory, to bring blessing where the devil prophesies cursing, to step into these scenarios and turn them around, bring healing, bring financial blessing, Bring emotional stability. Bring power to the weak. Bring deliverance to those that need it, Father. In Jesus' name, we thank you that you are an all-powerful God. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Amen. Now I'm told.